Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, graduates, families, faculty, alumni, and friends. My name is Dima Schlichtenko. I'm the chair of the mathematics department, and it is with a great pleasure that I welcome you here today to honor the graduating class of 2015. I'm very proud of our class of graduates, the largest ever. This year, over 440 students are graduating with a major in mathematics and a bachelor's degree, 30 students with PhD degrees, and approximately 50 students with a minor in mathematics. Overall, over 500 students. My three-year term as chair of the department is coming to an end, and let me take a moment to reflect upon the successes of our department during this time. Despite the challenges facing the University of California, our department has made giant strides towards excellence. We truly are among the best places to learn and the best places to do mathematics in the world. The most recent uh, U.S. News and World Report ranks, rankings put us as number seven in the U.S. And we are ranked number one in analysis, number two in applied mathematics and logic, and in the top ten across all disciplines. <laughs> Our truly amazing faculty have been recognized for their research accomplishments as, as well as their excellence in teaching. Just in the last year, Paul Ballmer was awarded the prestigious Humboldt Fellowship. Stan Osher received the Gauss Prize, the highest award in applied mathematics. Raphael Rouquier received the Simons Investigator Award. Terry Tao, the 2014 Breakthrough Prize in Mathematics. And our very own Paige Green, the UCLA-wide Distinguished Teaching Award for non-Senate faculty. Big round of applause for all of them. The years that you have spent at our department have laid the mathematical foundation for your future, and I hope you remember these years with fondness. Mathematics is a way of thinking, a way of approaching problems. It gives you a set of unique skills that will, you will carry with you your entire life. It is little wonder that this year, three of the top four professions were said to be mathematics related actuary, mathematician, and statistician. You will forever re remain a part of our department. I welcome you to remain involved, whether by subscribing to our annual newsletter, participating in our many alumni activities, such as career panels, or just dropping by to say hello anytime. On behalf of all of us at the mathematics department, Congratulations to all of you and all of your proud families. And now it gives me great pleasure to be introducing our commencement speaker, Professor, Professor Richard Tapia. Professor Tapia can be called a true Bruin in many more ways than one. He received his bachelor's, master's, and PhD degrees in mathematics from UCLA in the 1960s. Since then, he has been nationally recognized both for his research in mathematics and his deep and effective commitment to increasing the number of underrepresented minority mathematicians and scientists. His accolades are too many to list, but include such great distinctions as the National Medal of Science, membership of the National Academy of Engineering, the 2014 Vannevar Bush Award, and the 2004 Community Service Award from the UCLA Alumni Foundation. Please big, uh, give a big round of applause to Professor Tapia. Thank you. Thank you. Dean Rudnick, Chair Schlachtenko, faculty graduating students, family and friends, it's a pleasure and an honor to share this day with you. We're proud of you, the graduating students, and we congratulate you on your accomplishments. In our few minutes together, 
I want to share things that I've learned in my own life. It's now been nearly 50 years since I left UCLA to seek my future. 1968, nearly 50 years. So I can tell you the things I've learned along the way. You are here today in part because of your support system, your family, your friends, the faculty. Graduation is an important opportunity to formally, formally acknowledge the support system and let them share with you the joy and satisfaction of your accomplishments. My parents told me that they came to the United States from Mexico in search of education for themselves and hopefully for their future children. There are five of us, all born in Los Angeles. Times were very tough for my parents. They had to support themselves and say they were not even able to go to high school. Okay? However, their educational dreams were fulfilled through the children. Out of the five of us, three have graduate degrees, two from UCLA. Albeit, I must admit that two of us are lawyers, okay? My father taught me the value of inclusion. He loved everyone, and everyone loved him. My mother taught me that belief in yourself, incredible pride, hard work, and ed education can take you any place you want to go. She was aware that her message was in some sense in contrast to more widely held beliefs in the community about so-called Mexican-Americans. But she spent great time with pride and teaching us good work habits. She helped us to maintain our pride, our belief that we could. I used to think that when I was young, I used to think that she was rather naive with this belief, but I've learned that she was right. Every day of my life, I learned that she was right. I tell you today, mothers are always right, okay? I'm very proud of my Mexican heritage, and I'm proud of my American birth and nurturing. Am I Mexican? Am I American? Well, in Mexico, I'm called gringo. Here in the United States, I'm called Mexican. Some say to me, how sad. You're neither Mexican nor American. And I reply quickly, no, I am both. I am Mexican-American and embrace the best of two cultures. How lucky to be able to embrace two cultures. My message to the nation is that excellence comes in all flavors. And yes, we Hispanics not only belong, but we belong as leaders. I've lived the American dream, from the Barrios of Los Angeles to the White House and the National Medal of Science, the highest award given by the United States government. The United States is truly the great country that people say it is. The road ahead. I want to tell you a bit about the road ahead. You must realize by now that your entire life consists of a sequence of tasks, one right after the other, high school, undergraduate school, graduate school, career development. Moreover, each subsequent task is more or less, is less structured and therefore offers more challenges and requires more original thought and creativity. You're at a new road that's going to require a lot of thought. Yet with each step comes the opportunity for a broader impact. As you move through these tasks of life, do not expect the balance of good and bad, or success and ad adversity to be uniformly distributed across the population. The statement, I've had my bad, now comes my good, is at the very best wishful thinking. I'm going to tell you a bit of my story. My mother taught me to believe that one step forward at a time and hard work would take you to the end of the rainbow. And at the end of the rainbow, there was a pot of gold. However, my rainbow path has been very trying, with many ups and many downs. My wife, Jean, and I were married while I was a sophomore at UCLA. She had just graduated from high school. Our daughter, Cersei, was born when I was a junior. Jean's passion was dance, mine was mathematics. I received a PhD from UCLA the same year that our son, Richard, was born. The four of us went off to conquer the world. We went to University of Wisconsin-Madison, then to Rice University in Houston, Texas, and we were going to try to conquer the world. Now, we had more than our share of successes in Houston. Jean had a very successful dance studio. I received tenure in record time. Cersei was a dance and academic star. She spent her freshman year here at UCLA in dance, and I'm told that she was one of the rare freshmen to dance the lead role in UCLA's major dance production. Okay. After one year, Cersei went to New York, danced professionally. She then returned to Houston to study at Rice University. Our road was very smooth. Everything was going the way it was supposed to go. However, in 1977, Jean was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. 
1979, she was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis. She had to give up her studio and navigate this beautiful rainbow path from a wheelchair. No longer could she skip, no longer could she dance along the trail. No longer, yet we kept traveling. We kept traveling along this path, the rainbow path. Three years later, Cersei was killed in an automobile accident. Jean said, these were three strikes. She's out. Her life was over. Finally, I convinced her that she still had much to contribute, and we continued. We kept traveling on and on on this rainbow path, for we really had no other choice. Jean started an exercise program for people in wheelchairs called Coming Back. She won national awards. It was on national TV for this program. Our daughter Becky came into our life at this time and contributed to setting the mood. In 1992, I was the first Hispanic elected to the pre prestigious National Academy of Engineering, the first Hispanic in the country. In 1996, I was appointed to the National Science Board by President Clinton. And in 2006, I was appointed to the position of university professor at Rice University. That means I belong to the university, not to a department. I'm only the sixth person in the history of the school. In 2011, President Obama awarded me the National Medal of Science. Last year, I won the prestigious Vannevar Bush Award from the National Science Foundation. Yet, both Gina and I would trade these awards and honors, and she would suffer multiple sclerosis over and over just to have Cersei back with us. But we do not have that choice. Our only choice is to give up or play the hand that we were dealt. The choice is easy. Life has a very, very strange twist. In addition to mathematics, I am now an expert on things that I never really wanted to know about. I'm an expert on wheelchairs and how to travel with a wheelchair. In fact, her neurologist says, Richard, don't do any math. Write books about how to travel with a wheelchair. People will read those. Okay? I share this personal story to tell you this. When you encounter obstacles and adversity, learn to look both ways. Your challenge is to handle adversity. Prosperity is quite easy to handle. Realize that tragedy and failure are as much a part of life as are triumph and success. Failure is a part of every successful person's life. You must learn to grow from your failures and to develop compassion and sensitivity from your tragedies. At each stage of your life and career, continue to dream and work to make your dreams come true. But learn to cope and still enjoy life if they don't all come true. UCLA is one of the great educational institutions of the world. Your UCLA education will serve you well. However, this preparation only takes you to yet to another starting place. You must choose your direction, take the first step, and follow through. You've been given a fine set of tools. What you construct with them is up to you. Success or failure will not be dependent on your education, but on what you do with it. The mathematician as civic scientist. In 1998, as a member of the National Science Board, I had the opportunity to have breakfast with Newt Gingrich. He looked at me and he said, Richard, what do you do? I replied that I was a mathematician. He replied saying, you mathematicians are so dull and boring that if you were in the Oprah Winfrey show, you would be turned off in less than a minute. Okay. Okay. In 2011, after being awarded the National Medal of Science by President Obama, I was interviewed by Michelle Martin on National Public Radio. She said to me after the interview, Richard, the worst people for me to interview are mathematicians. Okay. They're excessively narrow. They don't know how to sell themselves. They don't know how to sell their product. And they answer extremely important questions with yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> However, the interview went very smoothly. I talked about life. I talked about gene. I talked about wheelchairs. So um, at the end of the interview, Michelle Martin came up to me and says, I don't do this, but I want to hug you, and I want to tell you that I never thought you were a mathematician. Okay? So listen to it. In national science leadership activities, we see first the physicists. Somehow they seem to be the leaders in the nation. Then the chemist, and then the mathematician. And we need to work to change that. Okay? Yet we mathematicians are really quite smart. We have much to offer. We have excellent understanding of those issues that we choose to pursue but we're narrow in our choice of what we should pursue. We mathematicians must not only care, but must reach out and reach back. I implore you to be what Neil Lane, past science advisor to President Clinton and past director of the National Science Foundation calls 
the civic scientist. Become involved. Do your part to solve current uh, critical societal and educational problems. Mathematics education in public K-12 schools is in shambles. Now you may say that we have left you with these problems. And I would answer, this is true. But we can't redeal the hand. Your challenge is to play well what you have been dealt. The future of the world's scientific and societal health is in your hands. Many of you will distinguish yourselves with prestigious awards and recognition, including a possible Nobel Prize or a Fields Medal. This will be of significant value to America's scientific health, and it will bring you great prestige, but this alone will not be enough. It will not bring you the satisfaction of helping those less privileged to live better lives and improving the health of the nation. It's no longer someone else's job. As of today, it's your job. Let me talk a bit about the prestigious National Medal of Science. Do I belong? How can I belong to a class that consists of the great mathematical heroes, Norbert Wiener, Solomon Lefschetz, Marston Morris, Oscar Zarinsky, John Milner, Paul Cohen, Paul Cohen, Jerry uh, Neyman, William Feller, John Tukey, Kurt Gödel, Joseph Dube, and Peter Lax. How can I be in that class? Okay. Well, my wife and I would argue about this. Many years ago, she'd say, can you win the National Medal of Science? And I'd say, gee, no way. There's no way. You don't understand the quality of those people. And then I won. And she said, Richard, you won. <laughs> so at the beginning of the National Medal of uh, Science ceremony in 2011, President Obama came out. And he said, congratulations to all of you. All of you have performed excellent research. But Richard Tapia has given to the nation in the critically important areas of improving ethnic representation and gender equity. I wish the others of you would emulate his success. I then said to myself, thank you, President Obama, for showing me that maybe I do belong. Okay. So I share with you two, two guidelines. I'm not the best, but I'm good enough. Was I ever the best in my math classes at UCLA? Probably not. But I was good enough. And every step of the way has been good enough. I don't say, am I the best? I say, am I good enough? Another thing that I learned, if you sit on the porch with the big dogs and occasionally bark like a big dog, the world will view you as a big dog. Okay? And that's been my secret. Finally, I ask you not to forget that at the very center of your highly complex technological and scientific world are people. People, people that need you and people that you need. Reach out, touch them on a regular basis. Congratulations, I wish you all the best.